morning uh, tonight. Uh, I think most of you know me. Mike, I'm Mike Piles, uh, and uh, I'm chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission. I think you know most of the other folks here. Chelsea Bramble is our uh, uh, legal uh, attorney. And uh, while we're here tonight, the reason we're having this meeting tonight, uh, we held a public hearing uh, on June the 25th and uh, there was a mix-up about the time of that meeting and so we decided to hold another public hearing to allow people uh, to make comments on the changes uh, that we have made that we've been instructed by fiscal court to make and we're going to present those changes to fiscal court next monday night now in the we we do have a public comment section uh a time for public comment but I would ask you to hold your comments to changes that we have made in the plan or the item that we're going to discuss tonight. Uh, and uh, if you have comments that you would like to make pro or for planning and zoning or against planning and zoning, I would ask you to submit those to the appropriate governing body, the fiscal court, this coming Monday night. And I believe that fiscal court meeting starts at 530, is that correct? Somebody tell me, did it. Yes. I mean, uh, Crystal. That's okay. Yes, it's correct. Uh, so at 5:30. So public comment will be limited to changes that we ha have been asked to make uh, in the uh, planning and zoning ordinance, and uh, also comments uh, on the item on the agenda tonight. And uh, any other comments, uh, you should wait and, and and make those before physical court. So uh, with that. Uh, I'll call this meeting to order, and uh, Diana, would you uh, call the roll? Sure. Tom Taylor? Here. Jim Mitchell? Here. Charles McCoy? Here. Michael Piles? Here. Bob Yoler? Here. Jonathan Turner? Chelsea Bramble? Here. Tina Drake? On the way. And Diana Arnold? And I think Tina is... She's on her way. She's on her way. Okay. Uh, under uh, new business, uh, one of the items that we have uh, in as a conditional use in the uh, A1 district is land farming of sludge, and uh, so we, we we will take public comment on that, and uh, there will be some discussion as to whether or not later on whether or not we want to leave that in there or remove it. Uh, and present that to fiscal court along with the other changes that we made. Uh, but before we take public comment on that, uh, Chris, where did you go? Right here. Uh, I, I just would like for you to address what you found out from the Henry County Planning and Zoning uh, Commission. Okay, yeah, when, I, when this first started, you know, there was facts and rumors and everything that went on about the proposed landfill, slug, waste on whatever it's been called that's going to come in on 421, or it's been proposed to come in on 421, going towards the mill. And I've read the Henry County Local, and I wanted to get a fact of what and why the Board of Adjustments in Henry County denied it. Called the Henry County Judge's Office, they give me numbers to each and every member of the Board of Adjustments. I talked to one lady that was really helpful, and she was, I think, is a Vice Chairman of that committee. The basic reason that Henry County denied is because the use of the land sludge waste pond that was going to go in in Henry County was because it did not meet the comprehensive plan of Henry County based on safety, health, and welfare of the residents of Henry County. With that being said, the safety part of that was where they was going to put it. It was 20 tankers a day one way, which is 40 total. At that, right there where 22 meets 421. That was the safety part of it. The health part of it was the odor that it could cause, the smell, and the runoff. There was a creek behind that property where this was gonna be located that runs all the way to the Kentucky River down around Lockport, I believe. And the welfare. They said this was a big one. The welfare of the residents of Henry County 
if this, if they were to approve that change of zoning permit, Henry County would be responsible for manning that landfill with someone that would test the soil, test each load, or samples of each load of everything that went into this sludge pond. And they basically did not have the money to do that. And all those factors were in, thought of, and it wasn't because we don't want it. They had a plan. They had a comprehensive plan that they went by, and what was presented to the Board of Adjustments of Henry County, the criteria did not meet that. And that's why, for a fact, I heard it from the Board of Adjustments of Henry County why they denied their permit over there. And that's what I found out, and that, that's, that's true. Uh, does anyone on the commission want to make a comment or anything before we open it up for, uh, for public comments? I did some research today on uh, some of the byproducts and possible health concerns about it. One of them was uh, the process, this is from an article in 2000, uh, 2010, that mercury is one of the, uh, through mercury is one of the processes that's used in microscopic or uh, tangible amounts, trace amounts of mercury could, not will, but could be found in the, in the uh, offage. The second thing is, and this was a biological concern for the environment, was that uh, honeybees, mason bees, start to use sucrose instead of glucose, and it causes the collapse, colony collapse, which is a condition where the, the colony does not survive. Being a rural area this, in, a, in need of fertilization for a lot of our crops, that has to be a concern. The other issues are the water, uh, the water drainage from it, the concentration. Uh, there are a lot of issues that have to be addressed in terms of being, this being allowed, whether or not you have zoning, okay? It has to go to the state. And the state makes the determination whether or not this is a, uh, a fair and allowable application of the land. So that said, um, I want the public to consider all that as they make their decision. It is the decision of the public. You will get it or you won't get it. You may or may not get zoning, and you may or may not get the sludge, but you kind of have to make a decision on what you want to be, and that's where we're at, I guess, in our society right now. So I got to I know in some of the reading that, that I did, Bob, also, they talked about uh, even in the process of sterilizing the sludge they don't always get the pharmaceuticals out there or aerosols and other chemicals that they don't they don't do not get out of there's the, bacterial uh, they have to meet certain bacterial concentrations and things like that that would come down. Okay, uh, I know we have a large number of people here and uh, uh, let's try to keep it those of you that, that want to make a comment about this, please try to keep it concise and uh, uh, just stand uh, and uh, state your name, and then we'll hear your, your comments. Okay, my name's Trent Jeffries. I own the property that's adjacent to the soon-to-be sludge place. Okay, I know he was stating that the high level, levels of mercury, there's runoff. Okay, on the back of that property is the headwaters of Holy <coughs> Creek which we all know that that goes into the Ohio also. Uh, the creek also runs across the back of my property. It runs across the back of Russell Young's property, Mike Terhoon's property, property, all the way down to Graham's property. Uh, now, I have livestock running on that property. And, you know, I'm totally against it from what I've gathered from it. I'm, I've left messages with the owner to call me, to explain stuff to me. And that was two weeks ago. I yet got the con uh, uh, call from him. And, you know, I'm just concerned. And how is that going to affect the value of my property and everybody else's property? 
Thank you for your comments. <coughs> and about back in the back. My name is Diane McKinney, and the farm is directly across from my house. Um, that farm has been in the McKinney family for years, and to see it turned into something like this is very disturbing. And like Trent said, the value of my home and my land around that is going to be devalued if this comes in. Plus, I'll have to deal with the smell, if there is smell, and they say it's rotten fruit, you're going to smell it. But I do not see this. My brother is here. He has a nice place right behind me, beside me, and he does not want to see this here. So, that's my opinion. And My name is Jackie Jeffries. I'm Trent's wife. I've got a lot of concern with this. I'm very verbal. Uh, I've been doing a lot of search on, on this. Been trying to run this guy down. No luck. My concern to each and every one of you all. You talk about all these trucks that's going to be running up and down 24 hours a day. What about our buses? Okay, my route goes all the way around the landfill. I literally have lines that is, and this is from sludge, that is caked up on these $100,000 buses. We have brand new buses, guys, that are literally rusting, and you cannot. It sets up like concrete. <coughs> Not only buses, your vehicles. I spend lots of money to try to get these buses clean, and that comes out of my pocket. Our taxpayers' money is paying for things like that, and you all need to be considering not only is it affecting farms, it's also affecting taxpayer money in that issue, you know, because these buses are not cheap. And my concern is, like Trent said, the waterway, my livestock what it's going to do to the land, and what it's going to do to the community. Nobody wants to live in Trimble County anymore. I know it best. I am out there eight hours a day on the school bus. I talk to everybody, and nobody wants to live here because of what's going on. We do not need this. Thank you for your comments. Yes. Uh, blue shirt. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Todd Bryan, and I just want to kind of build on what you were saying about the traffic issue. And I think you're right about the school buses and concerns about traffic safety, but also just wear and tear on our roads. We already have seen, you know, some degradation on our roads from what the previous condition used to be, just from traffic from normal wear and tear. And I think this is going to be with the extra trucks, heavy trucks, it's going to be a lot more wear and tear on our roads. And we'll have to pay for that too. That comes out of our tax money as well. And also, Bob, you mentioned mercury and some things that might be present in this. One thing that I can guarantee you will be present is methane, because everything that rots produces methane. And methane is not great to breathe, especially if you get it in large numbers. It's if you have asthma or any kind of uh, respiratory condition like I do, and I don't live too far down the road from this either, so I do have some, some personal concern about this. It, it's not very good for you. And while it's fine to say that this may be small amounts. It's the start of production for this methane. This whole kind of processing is fairly new. There's not a lot of long-term research on what the effects of this are as you move forward. And we really are kind of rolling the dice on this if we if we let it into the county. And I'm really not comfortable with that. Yeah, they're talking like about 200 million gallons. I'm sorry? 200 million gallons is what they're talking about. Yeah, and, and on, on the site for r and Septic, he mentions uh, something on there about, on Treehouse, I'm sorry, Treehouse, where this is going to come from, they mentioned the amount of methane that they're responsible for, and it's a pretty significant amount already. So it's, it will be interesting to see what they project would be for this, but I, I'm just not comfortable with it. Yeah, I'll get you next. I'm Russell Young. I'm a landowner. It's Hardy Creek Bounders on the west side of my property. If this goes in, first question I'm going to ask, who's going to do the environmental study on the ground, on the earth, to make sure that we don't have sinkholes running directly into the creek, 
I'm proud owner of a piece of property. It was my grandfather's. And we have sinkholes today that were not there when I was a child. The ground is shifting. It's moving. The lake right down here on the property he bought right on 421 has been repaired how many times? Because of shifting. Because of moving. If it's allowed to go in there, chances are we're condemned before he starts. That's my personal opinion. Just from experience. I'm not a teenager. I call myself an antique. But I've got a little experience and I've got a little bit of common sense about it. And I'm proud of that. But the fact is, if we allow that to go in down there, everybody in this room, your property value is going to devalue. Amen. Think about it. Now, if I sold my property to somebody like this, I wouldn't have the face to come up here in front of this group of people. Because I think it, was, it wasn't right to the community. We don't have planning and zoning, but we got friends and neighbors, and I think more of them than any money in the bank. I'll tell you that. I've got respect for my neighbors, and I've got love for my neighbors, and I'm not going to do them this way. I'm finished. Thank you. <coughs> I do want to thank Russell. Russell served on the steering committee when we were developing the comprehensive plan uh, before we developed the zoning ordinance. Uh, the gentleman right here. The, the Kendall, I own the property right straight across from where they plan on building. Mr. Jones, uh, Russell, pretty well took what I was going to say about the pond, the sinkholes in that area run through there. Also, uh, you're talking about the smell. I worked at a chemical factory for 30 some odd years. And our hair is in here, you don't have sludge, you don't have smell. Mm -hmm. And you think about living right across, the truck coming in, you got the county park with your teenagers and your young people playing ball right up the road from that. What kind of adverse effect is that going to have on them? Okay, some back in the back. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Beverly Wingham. Uh, our county does have a lot of sinkholes. That gets in the ground where it can spread laterally. <laughs> far away from the original site. But what I'm wanting to talk about is we already have a high incidence of cancer and lung disease in this county. And if you introduce heavy metal contamination and things like that, it's only going to increase. And we have beauty in this county. And uh, animal life and insect life, and we all depend on that. And it would just be a shame to destroy that person few amount of dollars. And people's lives, there's families in this area. It's just sad. Yeah, yeah. John Elliott, Trimble County. Y'all probably run me out of the courthouse because I'm on the other side of the fence. I got a farm in Henry County and I got a farm in Trimble County. I talked to a neighbor in Pender County that had been using for three years. He said, I haven't bought a dime worth of fertilizer since I started using it, or got to use it. They cut him off. Three or four people got to complaining. I called it politics, and he kind of agreed with me. That he didn't agree with the judge in Pender County, and I don't either. But anyway, he showed me grass that was waist high, where he had spread it two or three years. He didn't spread any this year because they cut him off. The grass where he hadn't spread it was a short. And uh, I'll take all of it that I can get on my farm whenever I can get it. What's John, he talking you know, about? Yeah. They got the wrong name on it when they called it sludge because they got to call it sludge. It ain't nothing but sugar water mm -hmm. is what it is. Do you, do you know that John, that he's done an analysis on it? Do you, do you know if the company has done an analysis on, on the uh, on He runs the waste test. He had to go through a lot of hoops to get it. But he said it was worth every penny of it, and he would take all well, of it he could get. I'm talking about the company that, that, was, that was delivering it to you, yeah. and they tested it. They, they, they hauled it to him and spread it, and he said there wasn't no runoff because he put it on grassland, and it was spread just like a liquid manure spreader would. Yeah. And he didn't have a bit of trouble. They called it in there with semis and they spread it on the grass. And he said, I can show you right today where it was spread and where they missed and where they didn't spread. Because so some places on his farm, 
you couldn't get the semi on it. Yeah, I, I was just asking if the company delivering it had tested it was for company, nitrogen, it was phosphorus, and the, potassium. He had the name of it, and I could probably take it. He could give you the name and yeah. everybody. But uh, he had no problem with it. He'd like to get more of it. And I was, that, with his recommendation, I'll take all I can get. Yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. Yes, I'm Gary Taylor. Um, I think if we let this go in, it's going to be just like the landfill and other in town. It's going to be what else is going to go in down here. So we need to stop it now. We should have had planning and zoning long time ago. The thing about it is, with with the soil, and there is, is there are situations where you have grass, you know, as, as tall as your shoulders. But there is also cases like in Georgia, where you have areas where there are no grass, and you have dead cattle, and that's a situation in in particular where they were able to, you know. You have farmers who don't have a whole lot of money, can't take cases to court, and in that case, they did take the case to court, and they took the EPA, which, you know, they took them to court, and you can look it up, and it's there, and the fact, problem is, is the EPA is, they, they don't, you know, it's, it's hard to govern, get them in there to do their job, like you're supposed to, to track down what's being, you know, tested, and we're going to have the same problem in this community. And if, if this, you know, is able to get approved, and just because the testing is, is going on, it's not exact, and I think we're going to have a big problem with that. So we're not always going to know what chemicals are, are you know, there, and because the standards are not are what they should be. So that's not something I don't feel that our our. Um, maybe our nation as a whole has really pinned down like it should, and I'm not comfortable with that. But, you know, for example, there in Georgia, it's happened in Canada, it's happened in other places, you have dead cattle. You have other livestock, you have patches of ground, they not only smell like something really bad, like urine, but there is no grass. There is even people that, that die because you have airborne pathogens. So there's good and bad, but I don't want to see the bad coming from the county. Someone back in the back, uh, please. Or, yes. Yeah, Vicki Bernard's there on the land right across from where this is going to go. And for this gentleman up here thinks it's so good, why don't he sell the farm and put it on his farm instead of the farm next to me? Another thing, if Henry County don't want it, why would Trimble County want this mess? I mean. Is Henry County on Our own. Well, that's. I guess that was one of my questions that Chris earlier uh, did he apply the Olin County Planning and Zoning to apply it. I, I'm not sure about that, Mike, if he did or not. Yeah, I, I was just curious about that. Or uh, what about the landfill? I'm not sure. Uh, if he uh, tried, uh, tried that option. Uh, back in the back corner. Sorry. My name is Jakey Jackson. I live on the very, very south east corner of Trimble County and barely in it. Um, so this probably won't affect me as much, but my question is more of a clarification. Uh, the gentleman who said he spoke to Henry County, what, were they talking about planning and zoning the comprehensive plan, or was this something completely different? The, the company applied for a permit. Okay. With who? About the Board of Adjustments. Board of Adjustments for planning and zoning. Yeah, for Henry okay, County. Okay, for Henry County, thank you. Yeah. Okay, but it's a permit and upon all those reasons because Henry County has plans on and a comprehensive plan on how right. they want their land developed for the future, and this didn't meet that criteria. And ours, uh, the proposed plan was based on theirs, correct? Yes. So if it didn't pass theirs and ours is based on theirs, wouldn't you imply that it wouldn't pass ours? We don't have the final say because planning and zoning, it was passed back in November 
but the enforcement of it was suspended until August the 1st. Right. So, what we decide here tonight doesn't amount to a hill of beans. What, what is decided, what really is going to have an effect on this plan is whether physical court <coughs> reinstates it next Monday night. That, that's my follow-up <coughs> question, is everyone wants to reference the planning and zoning, call it a living document, or, or that it's, uh, what was the non-binding was the term you kept using. Uh, I think that's what scares the majority of the people who are against it, is because, yes, when it comes to things like this, I don't think you're going to find that many people who are for something like this. Mm -hmm. A majority of people are going to be against Yes, there are going to be a few people that are for it, and that's fine. The problem that most people have, myself included, with the way it's worded is it can change at any moment and there's nothing we can do about it. I understand wanting to keep major things like a sludge farm or whatever you want to reference it at or not wanting another landfill. That makes perfect sense. What I don't understand is the same block telling someone who wants to build a doghouse on their property that they have to apply for a permit and they have to have somebody come out and approve the plans and have to pay the county government a, you know, a fee. The permit is an acknowledgement that you intend to build. Again, if it's my personal property, why do I even have to go through all this? And if it's a living document that can be changed at any moment and that can all of a sudden be applied in. The reason for a potential site is it just to make sure that it's at least eight feet from the property line. Again, if it's my property and I want to build the house next door to my house and I want to build a breezeway for the dog, who cares? It's my property. Thank you. Thank you. If, if, again, it's my property. I don't really care what my neighbor thinks. <laughs> but this has nothing to do with planning and zoning. Correct? The sludge farm has nothing to do with planning and zoning. That's why I said you need one has a comment for planning that is in favor of planning and zoning or against planning and zoning, you need to uh, uh, refer those comments to the fiscal court Monday night because they're going to make the decision. We're going to make a presentation Monday night to the fiscal court on the changes that we have made. And by the way, you said that the document can change overnight. No, it cannot. Well, it, that was the term it, that I was getting, so please explain the difference. That's why we have been holding public hearings on these changes and taking public comments. Any changes that we make in this planning and zoning ordinance has to be done at a public hearing and also has to be approved by the governing body of this county, the physical court. We don't have the final say in the physical court. The, the people who appointed us, we're volunteers here. I understand. Uh, so they have the final say. The governing body uh, has, has the final say, and also Bedford City Council, because they have opted in planning and zoning also. Yes, sir, back in the back there. Uh, my name is Blaisdell. My question is, if I remember correctly, three or four years ago, it might have been longer than three or four years ago, LGD tried to put their ash in the caves down here, right? They own the caves. But somehow we stopped. Why can't we stop the sludge thing? What's the difference? Well, I, I will tell you, even if we have planning and zoning then, uh, we, we, we can ask LGMD to do certain things, but we can be overruled also. Well, what decision. I'm saying is, they found out when, when the environmental people found out that LGD was going to put ash and those caves or whatever's underneath them down there that they actually own, they stop from doing anything on their own property. Why can we not stop this sludge or whatever it is? Same difference. Why well, can't, again, can we get a hold of the EPA or something like that? Again, that depends on the physical court next Monday night. Okay. That, it, does, it doesn't depend on us, it depends on them. Uh, we, we will submit the plan and the changes to them. They will decide whether or not to, to accept them and also for the estate plan to plan and so uh, Monday night. Yes, ma'am. I believe it was the Sierra Club got involved for the environmental issues. Weren't they involved in the. I don't know, I just remember that. Yeah. environmental group you said, I believe it was the Sierra Club. 
and uh, but the, they don't decide. They they take. I guess they take legal action. They're very forceful, and you know they were the, the <coughs> moving force behind that got it started. So I just wanted to put that in there and let you know that. Yeah, you want to make it again, sir? yeah I, I know I've, I've spoken already so I'll, I'm speaking again I like the phone um, I, I think my, my take on this whole thing about you know whether we can stop it without planning and zoning or wherever and I know you know I'll, I'll be at the fiscal court meeting too but um, my question really is how many times do we want to fight this fight I mean we we've, we've stopped LG in a year the Sierra Club did or somebody did it and that's fantastic that's great and we're trying to stop this now and that's also great but without planning and zoning what's to say that this guy decides in six months he wants to dispose of human waste on this land exactly. yeah. what stops it then where does it stop how many times do we have to keep doing this I mean we're a small farming community small farming communities get turned into everybody else's dumping ground if you don't have some yes. way to protect them exactly. right. and I would encourage everybody to show up at this special uh, court meeting and support planning and zoning if they don't want this community to turn into something that we don't recognize anymore. Now, I think the planning and zoning has been fighting the physical court. They've been, physical court has been trying to get the planning and zoning to change it. It's okay. They've been doing it. They've been doing their job. Now it's the physical court to make up their mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask Jim Mitchell. He's got a, a a uh, text message that Rick ran uh, had sent to him because Rick Rick has been looking into this also. And Jim, would you? It's on the internet. Yeah, I don't know. We got a couple sure comments not, over here. It says Rick ran. Uh, oh, I met this morning you. in Frankfurt with officials from the Energy and Environmental Cabinet concerning the sludge farm that is to be located in Trimble County. A permit requested has been received by the cabinet to depress the material on the property and a separate permit for a lagoon on the property to hold the material until it can be spread on the land. As of this morning, both permit requests are pending. I made a written open record request this morning to get access to all documents pertaining to both permits, and I have requested that the, the cabinet hold a public hearing in Trimble County on this matter. I hope to have these documents in hand soon. This should give us access to information about this situation. I am hopeful, hopeful the state will grant us the public hearing and schedule it soon. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I had someone over here first. I'll then I'll want to make a comment. Yes. I've, I've heard a lot about what. <clears throat> what can go wrong with this plan? A couple of things that stood out to me long term and it's going to affect the future of my child that lives in this county, that loves this county, who may want to continue to live here, is air. Air. Air quality. What type of long term research has been done to show us what effect it has on the people living around there? She has chronic, moderate to severe asthma. We go to the park. How long is she going to be able to do that if this comes in here? Because of somebody else's greed. Yep. And I'm telling you what, I owe her that. And another thing is about the bees. It's not a joke. They, those bees may feed on that stuff, but they're not pollinating. And the bees are already in decline in the entire country, world. What are we going to say to her grandchildren? When do we say enough is enough? I am fired up. This is my child. She wants a future. She deserves a future in a clean county. Yeah. And I'm not yeah. clean. I'm Beverly Williams again. Um, the methane is a possible byproduct of this plant. It's also a bad greenhouse gas, so it destroys our atmosphere at a faster rate than it already is being destroyed. But the main question, Henry County declined to have that company in there because of financial reasons, because their county is small and uh, poor. And I, our, we're not very rich either, are we? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's a big thing to think about. If we get let these people in here 
and we have to take care of all the road destruction and seeing that the testing is going on or what they're trying to sneak in there to that holding pond. Um, you know, we just won't know, and if we don't have the money to do it in the first place, I just don't think it should be here until we are financially strong enough to support the mess we allow in. And what kind of under the table deals are going on that's, that's making this really a big push now? Yes. I just want to say that I think what I talked earlier was all about me and what it's going to do to me. But I am concerned about everyone in my community because it's not just about me. Just like Starla said, I had grandchildren that live here. And I want to leave my land, my home, to my grandchildren. But what kind of life are they going to have here? The way it is now, and if this comes through, they have no life. And I speak for everyone in this room and everyone in this community. And we should be concerned. Exactly. Yes. It's, it's like it's all in the world. We're in trouble. Um, I, I just have a question. Um, in general, uh, will this farm or land farming operation, will they um, stick to just if, if they are approved, will they stick to just this particular type of operation? Or will they, once they get in, be um, able to uh, pursue other endeavors, such as, you know, other types of commercial industrial waste? I, I've heard they have a contract with KSR, which is human waste. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so uh, yeah, I'm worried about the trucks. <laughs> that so you can, you yeah, can go so on. So Thank you for that. You can go online and you can look up which are which our elected officials do is they've got permits for land application for sewage sludge, all right? And it's very intensive that they have to fill out. The main thing that strikes me is we don't get to make that decision. Frank for Frank Frank for Frank 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 I mean, it goes from, I mean, grease traps to you name it. And I mean, so we think we're getting, you know, strawberry fields. But are we going to get, you know, strawberry fields and you know, number two fields? And, you know, what are we really yeah. getting? What are we signing up for? Everything that goes down Are you saying you don't want to film county number one and a number two business? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go for a county bigger. Our, our kids are, you know, we're, we're trying to rebuild our school systems, and, you know, I, I don't want to, the kids that come in here to compete with our athletics, and, you know, I, this, I want our kids to have pride in their, their school system and who they are. You know, I, I don't think this is good for them either. So, you know, this is our community. We need to be able to, you know, feel pride about where we live. This doesn't do it for us. Yeah. Okay, um, my question is to Tina, do we not have ordinances already in place yes. to take care of this we without planning and zoning? <laughs> we have ordinances. Do we have ordinances that will take care of this without planning and zoning? I can't. Yes, not. right here. We don't okay. need planning and zoning. Well, wait, wait, wait. I get to speak for myself. But you, you didn't want to. Directly, and but you didn't want to. I, I can't not because this is what I was going to say. We have legal ordinances. They're called solid waste ordinances and nuisance ordinances. They are public knowledge. You're welcome to have a copy of them. I mean, please give me time and call me and let me get those copied. But yes, we have those ordinances. However, I cannot tell you whether they can stop them or not because I do not have my law degree, nor would I ever want to do that. So I have actually handed everything over to my friend right, Crystal. We don't, we don't need planning and zoning to stop it because we already have the ordinances. Who are you? Jesse Long. Thank you. Are you a lawyer? Yes. No, but right here's the ordinances. I, I don't care. Are you a lawyer? No. Do you know how it applies in law? I can't say that I do. Are you, you can make the statement. I'm no, but I, I have to write contracts for, for a living. We have a lawyer right here. Okay. Unless you have tried to do these things, I don't see how you could stop it. So you're telling me planning and zoning could stop it? Yeah. Absolutely, it didn't hit the county. No, what the man said was the property was not, there was too many things against the property in the area. That's not at all what he said. That is exactly he what he said. He said the Board of Adjustments voted no. Because there was 
uh, safety. He said the Board of Adjustment for that piece of property. For that piece of property. They could vote no for any piece of property. They could vote no for every piece of property that was proposed. They could. They probably would because it doesn't. But we don't know that. That's the thing we don't know. Go on that's the, the thing. The unknown. Go on to the next. It is the unknown. Exactly. You don't know whether it exactly. would, whether all those ordinances exactly. are something. And we don't know if we have planning and zoning would do it either. Okay. Comment back in the back. Just to clarify that, uh, there is an attorney present, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The reference, uh, Mr. Long, the, uh, uh, the paperwork you have there, can you make that available for them to take a look at and see if you're going to get it done? Well, can I just address it? Are you an attorney? Yeah. I'm a Trouble County attorney. Okay. And I can tell you that this solid waste ordinance, and it is specifically number 830.22, it does address it. It addresses, it, it's a wonderfully written, I didn't write this, but it's a great ordinance and it gives you the roadmap and fiscal court, he has to apply for a permit currently with fiscal court. Fiscal court has a certain amount of days. They have to determine whether or not the site is a suitable site. There is a whole slew of things that fiscal court has to consider as to whether or not it's an appropriate location based upon the health, economic, social status there. Uh, we have a park, we have a school not far from there. Um, we have Hardy Creek, we have possibly potholes that we are um, sinkholes that we may or may not know about in the area and the ground continuing to shift. But something that I would like to see, the current planning and zoning indicates that a conditional use in A1 is the sludge farm. Um, I would like this statute to be indicated, or I'm sorry, this ordinance to be indicated because that gives a good roadmap in my opinion, and Chelsea, read it and tell me your opinion on it, but I think it gives a really good adequate roadmap. But if you're going to omit that completely from planning and zoning, then if planning and zoning is adopted, then we wouldn't have that issue at all. But if it does go through and if, if it goes forward or planning and zoning is not adopted, then we do have this ordinance that we can, the fiscal court would. So even without planning and zoning, would that ordinance still be enacted or would planning and yes. zoning supersede that? Planning and zoning would supersede it. However, there's a portion in planning and zoning that says that the most restrictive shall apply. So if planning and zoning gives a, a less restriction, but this ordinance gives a, a higher restriction, then this ordinance is going to. So for clarification, the ordinance we already have could be used to address this. Absolutely. All right, that's all I want to ask. Thank you. I worked for a sewer company in Louisville, Kentucky for 17 years. If you to understand about sewer, when that waste goes to the sewer treatment plants, it's burned. These people literally have to buy cars. They can't go home, they have to buy clothes. The smell does not come out of your body. What do they treat? The sewers and stuff. It gets into your body. I did not work in the plant. I refused to work in the plant. They paid good money, but it wasn't good enough for me. Do not want, you don't want to allow chemicals to come into this county. I promise you, you don't. I saw it. I worked for 17 years at MSD. I retired from my company. I've seen things people don't want to see. They don't want to know what's under the ground in Jefferson County. I'm telling you, you don't want it here. It's filthy. That stuff you talk about sugar water, it's going to bring rats. It's going to bring roaches this day big. I'm not lying. I've seen them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Beverly Manning again. Uh, um, Rick Rand, they said that that company, is it PNZ? Is where is that? I saw that on Facebook. What is it? R and R Septic. Okay. Anyway, they applied for two permits through the Energy and Environment Cabinet of the state. And did that, did I think, did you say they had to apply for a county permit too? Oh yes, they, they have to apply for a state, they have to, they have to be permitted through the state and the county, yes. Okay, so. Uh, can I speak to that? Crystal, uh, I'd like to ask you a question. Um, I know you probably got the ordinance in front of you, I don't have that ordinance, but it did have the ordinances that they're required to, to submit to get the, to get the uh, state to go along with it. And they're rather extensive and from what it says in the state law, which is the definitive law, 
it says that they make the decision, not physical court of, of Trimble County. So that is the determinant of whether or not this could possibly go in, not completely your ordinance. You see you, what I'm saying? You're correct. So the state makes the determination as to whether or not they can conduct this type of activity. That's correct. However, this ordinance gives fiscal court the authority to check the site to see if the site is suitable. And they could decline that. Like Henry County, they declined that site. And it's my understanding, so I don't know if this is true or not, but it's my understanding that R&R &R could have picked another location in Henry County and then started the process. That, that wasn't the issue as I understood it. The way I understood it was Henry County did not have the finances to essentially supply another overseer like we have at the dump to take care of these of the testing that was necessary. It is extensive what they require. I don't know if you've looked at that or not, but I would suggest that you do. Yes. Very extensive, and it does not say that the person that owns the property that is doing the operation pays for it. It does not say that. Correct, correct. But, but my point is the, the county, the fiscal court will oversight, oversee the site, the location, and make a determination based upon, and I can give you a copy of this okay. that I have, but based upon the factors, the health, the safety, economics, all that in there. So, so our participation in coming to the meetings, is that weighed in in any way? Like if we show up and say and show our faces that we're against it, does that help in any way or no? So we write letters, get something. Of course, of course it does. And, and it should, and people so. shouldn't just sit back and let things just roll on through. There's a hand raised back here. Um, this. We all need to think that it's not, this is just this one incident. And look at us all. We don't want this to happen. We need to think of our grandkids. If we don't put something in place, they're just going to keep coming and coming. And, and people are going to get tired of fighting it. We're just going to move out. And this can be the little dump area for everybody that doesn't want it in their place. That's the point I was trying, that goes along with what I was trying to make. And I've heard a ton of what's wrong with this, what's wrong with this. I've never heard one positive benefit to this county from this coming in here. No. And I know what, and I'm against it. Don't but get me we, wrong. We, I don't hear one positive. Why is this good for Trumbull County? But it's not. Mike's right. Everybody has to feed on their magistrates and say, it's not just for us. We can't keep fighting this fight every time somebody wants to bring their gun. No, not feed on them, control Well, <laughs> so, you know, you need to think about that aspect, guys. I mean, we've got kids, grandkids, and whatever else. And I'm sure some people would like to keep their farms and do whatever with them without having to worry about what's coming in next door. Yeah. 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 They can make our break this community. You voted them in. You need to express your opinions to these guys. They, they can't do nothing right now until after all this. Now, they have got the power to change the laws here in the community, to make it harder, to make it softer. <coughs> You're right about it. But we've also got the landfill value. Mm -hmm. We've got LG and East Lud coming out here on uh, Alden Ridge. Nothing's been done about them. And now they want this to come in. It's these gentlemen, these four, five gentlemen, to make that decision to change the laws here in the community. And I suggest these are the ones that you need to be talking to until we find out what planning the zone is going to do in August. We can sit here and talk all night long about the smell, about contamination, about anything else, but it's going to fall down to five people. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I, just, I understand and agree with the concern about this operation, but, but I don't understand why 
the new ordinance would be any better than an existing ordinance that covers the issue. I mean, why isn't that ordinance, that law that is on the county books, it's just as effective as a new law that we would pass that would say the same thing, basically. Yeah. Right? Okay. The current, the current. Is it really? Is it really? Well, I mean, right here. Is it or not? I mean, if it's, an ordinance is not any good unless you enforce it. So are we going to choose to enforce the new one more than we've enforced the old one? Why would we do that? I mean, why do you need three laws to, to deal with the same issue if you have a law on the books? I don't understand where. And, and the current proposed ordinance would allow this operation. The current proposed zoning ordinance. Well, it's it's your opinion. It just says that it's, it's your opinion. Sludge. It's your opinion. Sludge farm. It says as long as it's regulated and any other requirement that the board of adjustments would make. So then it's allowed. No, not what? necessarily. <laughs> well, it's, it's clearly it, it, you can't say that it prohibits it. The passage of this ordinance would keep it from happening, right? that it wouldn't necessarily prohibit it. That's why, that's why we're discussing the issue tonight. John, uh, behind John, uh, just a minute, John, John I think. Yeah, yes, I'm sorry, I, I forgot about you. Darrell Hellblind, I grew up in this county, um, bought a house here four years ago, worked my rear end off to bring the value up on it. And I don't live that far from Jeffries, I don't live that far from Russell's property, and I sure as heck ain't that far from where they're wanting to put this. I can tell y'all, I work in a factory. We run hundreds and hundreds of semis a day through there. We spend thousands a year to maintain the road that is in there. I drove down McKinney Lane the other day near this. That road is crap to begin with. And you're telling me we're going to have the money in the county right now to keep it running after we start running 20 semis a day on it? No, sir. You're going to cause more wrecks. You're going to have more issues. And it's money the county doesn't have to spend right now to maintain it. I don't care what they're saying they're going to pay the county. If anything, to bring this in, it's not worth it. John, no, I'll give you yes. Go ahead, John. That comes out spoke one time. The only thing I want to talk this time is on planning and zoning. The only thing wrong with planning and zoning, if we'd had it 30 years ago, we would have had control over it. We wouldn't have had as much garbage in the county as we've got today. That's right. We're just 30 years too dang late. I've got a question. How many of the magistrates have actually went and looked at where this is supposed to be going? Just two? Chris, Chris, Chris. Well, I would like to invite each and every one of you all for a ride on the back of my farm and see how bad it's deteriorating and how this land is caving in on the back side down into Hardy Creek. I, any time, 24 hours a day, I'd like to invite each and every one of you, Kenny, J.D., Kirby, and Chris. I will take you a personal ride. Go with it. I mean, because I literally think this needs to be looked into because it is literally slipping away because of all of the uh, potholes as you want to call them, sinkholes I call them, the water that we've had, this ground cannot stand any more of this, okay? And again, along with the roadways and stuff, you ask yourselves, would you all are for zoning or not for zoning, okay? When you have a family member that's been in a wreck because the roads are horrible, or you have a bus that's sitting up on its side, Ask yourselves, how can you live with yourself because you let it come in, okay? It's everybody's decision whether they're for it or not. We are against it. Okay, I'll take another comment or two and then we'll have discussion with the, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, because I know you're talking about the amendments of the planning and zone. Well, what would the effect be if you just strike land farming with sludge and the proposal that goes to physical court. They would still have, if 
another company came up, they would still have to come to the Board of Adjustments to, to get a permit or a conditional use. Well, I mean, if, if they pass it, where you can't use sludge for farming, can, do they, would they still be allowed to come in? Yeah, they could they come and ask. They could come and ask. <coughs> but they would have to go to the Board of Adjustments to do that. So it's the same either way? Well, one's a conditional use and the other is a variance. And they're slightly different things, the way I understand the variances are generally harder to get. So the conditional use is something where the, the Board of Adjustments is already planned on the possibility of that, so there's already set criteria for how they would approve that. If it's a variance, then it's totally outside of the scope of what the plan is for zoning for that area, and it's a much more rigorous process to get that approved. I think that's what the difference would be if it's struck it from the, the board. Mike, could I have Yes, Kirby. I'm Kirby Melvin. I'm in District 4. I have a lot of people against it. I have a lot of people for it. Mr. Jelly Good hit a good note there a minute ago. 30 years too late. But we still got, I got grandkids and kids yeah, going to be here 30 years from now. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Now, if we don't do something, guys, I'm there to represent District 4, but I'm also here to protect Trimble County. And I'm going to do my job, and I am for zoning. Everybody knows it. And these other guys need to get on board with us and get it done. Second. Okay, just Kirby, you've had three uh, permits. Two, two, two firms he's done have. He's within that 30 years that he could have made a change. Not by himself. He did. What I'm saying is look at the broad, the whole pension. Not just this. This is important. But we're talking hundred thousand dollars here in August to the past for the first year. Then, 13% of the $100,000 if it passes, that's what it is. So take away the money. You pay yeah. I, I think you have to because this county can't afford I am not what, 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 Well, that's fine. What, that's your choice. $100,000. Yeah, that's what's his joke right there. Well, I just think, look at the whole picture. That's the whole thing. Planning is only, we've got enough on the books if we enforce them 30 years ago. Or 10 years ago, we might not be in this situation. We did. We didn't we know. Have a choice now. We've got a choice now. That's right. Why not let the. We need to do, make the right thing. But why not let people We've got our kids. Okay, I'm going to ask clarification of what the $100,000 is that he's talking yeah. about. Yeah. I don't have a clue what that is. How do you know so much? You know, yeah. we're all volunteers. I've been working on this for years. Who's paying you all? No, it's okay. Yeah. We're, we're all volunteers. Come to the meeting. I will. And I will explain. Who's paying you all? Thank you. It's okay. Okay. I, I want to take one more comment back to everybody. Okay. Okay. Any discussion? I have a question. Yes. Uh, John, you said uh, when they were dumping and the grass was growing a lot better, vitamins, whatever. And you said the complaint they stopped it. What were the complaints that they had? Yes, yes, John. On the zone? On the yeah, when they were dumping, I forgot the guy. Everybody was against it back there then. When Ray Clam tried to get it going, no, no. No, no, he, he's asking about what the, <coughs> the farmer next to you was yeah, having that product uh, spread on his farm. What was the complaints? I think he said you mentioned there that there were some complaints. <coughs> And they about cut it off. In Henry County. Yeah, in, in, in Henry County. In the Henry County, he didn't have any complaints. Oh, okay. I mean, he liked it. And he would get all he could get from us. <laughs> he liked that. But they cut him off going down some of the tall fish. And the judge, uh, John Logan, Brent, was the one 100% against it. And he tried to rule the county, and he did. Okay, last comment. Okay, now let me bring him again. Uh, well, the product that he was putting on his tall grass, was it directly coming from that sludge plant, that landfill, and did they have permits? Was it bottled, and, or would, was he just like, they were just giving it to him? Uh, I think John said that they were giving it to Okay, so it was unregulated, so he didn't know really what was in it? 
that, that's why I was asking if there was anything that had been analyzed. That makes sense. Okay, any discussion from uh, the Zoning Commission? I have one thing to say, Charles McCoy. Uh, we've heard lots and lots of people against zoning. If you're for zoning, show up Monday night at the meeting and support it. If you're against it, show up and argue against it. Amen. But show up at the meeting and do some good. This one will not make any difference. What we do here tonight is not going to make any difference on Monday night. Well, it, it will make a difference if this report approves it. It will also make a difference if this this, this uh, contingent use is removed from this ordinance because that will concretely make it much harder than the current law on the books for this county. Okay, I said one last, but I'm going to take it. Okay, two more and that's it. We're going to make a decision here. Yes. Fish, or planning and zoning is already on the books because it was voted in by the last four. Yes. And Todd suspended it until August. So now all it amounts to is a vote that they're going to have on Tuesday or Monday night. It's hot here. They should be suspended. Uh, yeah, there he is. Okay. Is that correct? Hey, Todd. I'm a little guy. He's <laughs> on the chair. So if that ordinance is there, why haven't we stopped it before now? Well, I, I don't know. I'm not a magistrate. I just advise the court, but I'm just telling you that they can vote for it to be reinstated. Oh, yeah, I know that. I mean, as far as that ordinance that would have stopped this from coming in here. Well, no, the ordinance currently allows it to come in here. So the reason why we're here today is to determine whether or not to omit Section 7 under conditional uses A1 to omit it. So right now, in its current form, it's allowed. It. So we just, should just say a minute, we just a minute. I, I disagree again with Crystal. I'm sorry, no. Crystal. I'll be putting you on the spot. That's okay. But, but here's the deal. The sludge is not defined, okay? And if you look at where it occurs in the ordinance, it occurs under agricultural uses, all right? So it's under an agricultural use, not under an industrial or commercial use. That's right. That's right. And so it's not real clear. I don't think you can definitively say that it is allowed. That's an opinion, that's not law. Well then, correct me if I'm wrong, because maybe I am, but I'm looking at your agenda and it says, discuss conditional uses in A1 district number seven, land farming of sludge. Well, A1 number seven defines and allows as a conditional use for A1, for land farming of sludge, provided that the applicant provides evidence it meets all state and federal regulations in addition to any other conditions determined by the court. Now, maybe my opinion's wrong, but you know what they say about opinions and assumptions, but I thought we were here to discuss whether or not that <coughs> needs to be omitted to where it's not a conditional use. Well, it also says, would you have an adverse impact upon the vitality, uses, assets, or character of agricultural and residential use in the area. It also says even under that, that the Board of Adjustments not. could put... I'll give you a copy. I'm sorry. The Board of Adjustments, as you read that, they could uh, put additional restrictions on that if they so chose. Just to clarify, there is a permit, a conditional use permit that would be required, which re requires if you're going to have a conditional use, which is defined as a sludge farm or the sludge product, you would have to go before the Board of Adjustments and they would grant the conditional use. It's not an automatic permissive use like some other, like other agriculture more ordinary agriculture I'm sorry, so uh, activity. So this, this is the final comment to leave back there and wait for the piece of paper for you. I'm Peggy Wayne Scott. Can I just want to know if there is a bigger venue for Monday night? Because I think this will do it. <laughs> 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 uh, Jim, the the only one would be a school, uh, a school facility or... Because there are people in the <coughs> who can't even really hear or participate. Well, I've made a liar out of myself twice already tonight, so go ahead and just make, make, it, make it three times. Guys, you should have said earlier, <coughs> this really upsets me because we have tried, I have drove to all the businesses, tried to get in contact with Mr. O's and the other O's, 
We have left cards. We have left business cards. I have left my number. I have talked to his secretary. She said he would have her, him call us back. Okay, this affects the whole community, but I feel it affects me in general. Okay? Is this the kind of guy that you want in our county that cannot call you back? Or get in contact? I mean, you know, is this who you all want in your county? I mean, I'm a person that when I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it and you're going to hear from me. I've seen you do it. Yes. <laughs> I will. But is this really the type of people we want coming in our county and all we're getting no. off of it is tax dollars? Money talks. That's right. Commissioners, any further discussion? Any comments? I, I, I got one. You One more. You're going to make a line out of me three. Four. Is it four? Just, just four. Okay. Well, it's just a point of interest. Even with planning and zoning in Henry County, they have a facility in Henry County. And I didn't know if everybody was aware of that or not. And also in Oldham County, too, as I understand it. And I don't know when it goes starting, so that's any any further discussion? Okay, I'll I'll entertain a motion for someone. Bob. That's, this, this is really an issue that is still, still just... No, I'm, oh, you want a, a motion on the vote? I vote that we, we uh, present the ordinance as uh, examined, intact, and uh, for the court make their decision appropriately based on the input from the community. I'll second it. Okay. So you're making a motion to leave... That's set number seven. And I would like to see it defined by the uh, Board of Adjustments, or we could we could talk tonight and uh, define it better. I think we're going to end up in a lot of muck. To put it a little bit off the side there, <laughs> uh, because it's it's a very difficult thing. I think it should. The fact that it lies where it does in the ordinance gives it strength as far as I'm concerned. But the, the, I can see where there is confusion that the uh, sludge can be misinterpreted. I would have thought it's animal offage or breakdown product of agricultural uses or fertilizer. But I can see where other people may have another look. I was thinking our point of discussion was whether or not to keep it in there or... or uh, I'm, I'll or withdraw my motion if you want to discuss that. I would draw my motion. Okay. <coughs> All right, so I will entertain a motion then whether or not to, stri to strike it or keep it as is for further further discussion down the road. You can always put it back in here. Well, uh, I'll, I'll, only after further discussion and another public hearing. I'm going to strike uh, public number 7. Yeah, it's um, A1 districts number, and section C, A1 districts number seven, land farming and sludge. Okay, you got it. Okay, I have a motion to strike it. Do I have a second? We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor of striking signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign? Aye. Okay, motion to strike. Uh, land farming is a sludge from the ordinance passes. Okay, um, there's a, another issue I wanted to mention to, uh, to you all that I, I wasn't sure it, it was a it was a change that we made under section 340, uh, and uh, I, I just wanted to double check because I'm not sure that we actually took care of that the other night. Uh, but the first, the first paragraph 
uh, states uh, notice of the time, place, and reason for the required public hearing should be given by one publication in the newspaper at general circulation in the county. And then it says not earlier than 21 days or later than seven days before the public hearing in accordance with KRS 424.130 and KRS 100.211. And uh, that is incorrect. So what we, what I would recommend is that you strike uh, from not earlier than 21 days or later than seven days before the public hearing. Strike that and just have it state notice of the time, place, and reason for the required public hearing should be given by one publication in the newspaper of general circulation in the county in accordance with KRS 424.130 and KRS 100.211 and just refer to the law. Uh, as to the, to the public hearing notice. Along those same lines, Mike, I noticed in FAP 20, the wording there, I think you all struck some stuff and you failed to strike a couple of words. Uh, the provisions of this ordinance. But it, just, just hold, hold it, hold it. Okay. Uh, let's take care of this one. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. No, that, that's, that's fine. Make a motion to strike that section. Okay, do I have a second? Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All like uh, opposed like sign. Okay, the motion passes. Okay. Uh, what section was it you were? Five twenty is what my notes said. <clears throat> something that's been struck already. It just looked like you failed to strike a couple of words. If you read 520, where a track existed that separately described track prior to what used to say the date of enactment, now it's going to have a date. Then, notwithstanding, got struck the provisions of this ordinance, said track. If you try to read that now, that is gibberish. I think you need to strike out the provisions of this ordinance. Because you left, you, you struck out the then notwithstanding, which is referring to the provisions of the ordinance. The provisions of this order. Provisions of this order. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Anything else on that five point? No. I was, that that just didn't mean it. Right. <laughs> okay. I guess I, I really just stepped on the three forty because I should have just should have just approved those as a whole so okay any uh anything else on notes or anything you all saw okay i'm gonna i'm gonna read, uh, make a motion for acceptance of the changes that we made um, in light of the fact that the amendment, the copies of uh, the comprehensive plan, complies with the comprehensive plan, has incorporated input from citizens and sufficiently corrects uh, error, errors and brings the ordinance into compliance with recent case law, 
I'd like to make a motion to recommend uh, the approval to the fiscal court, the proposed amendments, amendments to section 340 to correct for notice, and amendments to section 650 to eliminate uh, the sludge farming as conditional use in A1 district. And the amendments to 520 that we just did. And, and, and also the five, uh, in section 520. I'll need a second on that. Second. Okay, and have a second. Uh, is there any further discussion? No further discussion. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. Motion passes. Uh, Changes that we've made tonight will be presented to physical court Monday night. They'll make a decision on whether or not to approve uh, the changes and or reinstate planning and zoning. Uh, that, that meeting um, is July 15th, 530. Uh, any other, oh, I'm sorry, getting ahead of myself here. Uh, I wanna, part of the mix up on the, on the meeting, uh, on uh, July the, um, on the June 25th uh, was that uh, I was going to meet with the Trimble County Kenny uh, even asked me uh, to be sure to meet with the uh, uh, Trimble County Cattlemen's Association and I, I had agreed to meet with them on uh, July the 9th. Well they changed uh, their meeting uh, date to June the 25th the same time as our, our public hearing. Uh, that was scheduled that month. So I had taken a notice uh, to the judge's office uh, to have that time change from 6 p.m. to 5 so that I could go speak to the Trimble County Cattlemen's uh, at 6.30 uh, about the <coughs> planning and zoning on uh, agriculture in Trimble County. And so the paper uh, failed to get that in there so uh, there were several people that showed up what we thought were late, but they were showing up at six o'clock because uh, the notice was, I think Todd didn't say six o'clock in the paper. So because of that mix up, that's why we had this meeting, we were having this meeting tonight to make sure that everybody had a chance to comment. And then the thing about, this, uh, about the, uh, the waste product coming into the county also came up. So uh, that's why, we're having this meeting tonight, but I want to go over the survey with you all here in second. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, why is it at 530? Have they took in consideration that a lot of the people work in Louisville and do not even get home close to 6 o'clock? Well, they alternate, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Todd. No, those those meetings are set by ordinance, Jack, and uh, we have uh, January, April, July, and October that we meet at 5.30, and then the rest of the meetings are 9 a.m., and we have, those have to be set by ordinance. Okay. So uh, before you, everyone, you have a, a copy of a, a survey. I, I did a pre-survey with, with the farmers that were there. There were about 40 in attendance. Uh, unfortunately, only about 16 of them, and some of these may be husband and wife. Uh, uh, comments. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I try to keep it as simple as possible, but I, I did a, a survey before my presentation and then a survey after the presentation. And uh, I would just asked the question, do you support planning and zoning in Trimble County? Uh, yes or no? 46% said yes, 54% said no. And that was 13 respondents. Uh, I said, do you uh, believe planning and zoning will inhibit your ability to farm? 21% uh, said yes, 79% uh, said no. Uh, do you feel planning and zoning will inhibit your ability to develop your land? 35% said yes, 65% said no. Uh, do you feel that planning and zoning will inhibit your ability to transfer your land to your children? 23% said yes, 77% said no. Uh, do you believe that planning and zoning will inhibit your ability to sell your land? 35% said uh, yes, 65% said no. Now, I'm, I'm not singling out farmers here, 
because I think there are a lot of people like this. I ask them, have you read the comprehensive plan? Yes or no? 100% had not read it. Uh, now, don't, don't blame farmers folks for not reading the comprehensive plan because there are a lot of folks probably sitting in this room that haven't read, that haven't read it. Uh, one person said that they had read part of it, uh, but since I asked, have you read it or not, I, I did not count that as a yes. Have you read the planning and zoning ordinance? 100% said no. But, so again, don't blame farmers for not necessarily reading the planning and zoning ordinance and uh, because there were a lot of people that did not. Then after my presentation with the farmers, I did take another survey. Do you support planning and zoning in Trimble County? 50% said yes and 50% said no. Uh, do you believe planning and zoning will inhibit your ability to farm? 6%. There, there, was, there was some change here. 6% said yes. That was one, one responded. 94% said no. Uh, do you feel planning and zoning will inhibit your uh, ability to develop your land? 21% said yes. 79% said no. And previously, uh, that was 35% said yes. So it, it went down. Do you feel plan uh, planning and zoning will inhibit your ability to transfer your land to your children? 15% said yes. 85% said no. Excuse me, said no. And you feel, uh, believe planning and zoning would inhibit your ability to sell your land? 28% uh, said uh, yes, 72% said no. And that was down from 35% that previously said yes, and 65% uh, had said no. So that's, that's the results of that survey. Had a very good reception uh, from farmers. And, uh, and Mike? Yes. I'm sorry, I forgot. I didn't hear how many people. That's what I was going to ask. How many people were there? How many farmers? There, was, there were around 40. 40. And I said, unfortunately, only about 16 of them uh, filled out the, sur the so, survey. And so my response is I only counted, like, for instance, some of them would answer maybe all of the questions and not answer one. And so I didn't, I didn't, anything they didn't answer, I didn't count that as a, as a response. Well, 16 to one. Yeah, and I don't know if any of those were, I know there were husbands and wives there. I don't know if, uh, if, uh, if they answered it together or not. I'm just counting as one response. So that's, so that, that's, that's a result of that. Uh, any, any other thing that we need to uh, discuss? The only thing I think we need to do is ask Todd if he's thinking about moving the meeting from the physical court building for Monday night, or are you planning on having it, it, it just jam full? We, we already plan on having it here, and I see this room is full, so uh, I don't know. I don't know what the next option is yet, but uh, well, the other option maybe. Uh, I don't know. That's a hard thing because we're moving the moving the time and date of a meeting. I mean, the time's already different. But you move the location. How many people are going to raise hell about that? That aren't in this room here, and we're doing that. People the mind. Yeah, I, I can say that would happen. Well, that As it should happen. So there's a oh, I'm sorry. Sir, can we get a copy of the plan? Something you like? Can we talk about? Uh, you can get a copy of it at the library. Uh, the judge's office has a copy. They'll have to make you a copy. Uh, Todd, did you get I it scanned? I just made the PDF today. Oh, okay. Okay. So it, it will it will also be up. But even at that, if fiscal court approves the changes, then uh, we're going to have to go back through it. And as we take all the uh, things that we have deleted from it, and page numbers are going to change, and that's why it's good to go to Todd's name. Yes. Okay. Yes. And just to let everybody know, what you get from the library and what's online, nothing on it has redacted what you want to take out. Uh, that, that's, that's, why, that's why I was asking Todd if he had gotten it online, uh, online yet, yeah, because yes, it would be different. Yeah, nothing, nothing is redacted, redacted on, on the one online. That's the one that's in place right now. Our proposed changes are not online, but they're in the library. Any other discussion? 
Okay, our next meeting, if we still have the Planning and Zoning Commission, will be July 23rd, 2019. I will entertain a motion. Folks, anything else from anybody? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. And second. second, and all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.